questions of any of the uh, veterans who have spoken here. Um, and so without further ado, we're going to go to our next speaker. Um, we're going to hear from uh, Carl Hemming. Uh, and Carl is one of those uh, individuals that uh, did the thing that uh, keeps me motivated every day to remain active in the anti-war movement. And that was, uh, became active in the anti-war movement while he was still in the active duty military. Uh, Carl is a veteran of the Afghanistan war, uh, where he served as an engineer, meaning that you were an infantryman. Um, and <clears throat> uh, Carl joined uh, while on active duty, participated in anti-war actions publicly uh, while still on active duty, uh, and is an active member of Veterans for Peace in the UK. Uh, please welcome Carl. Good evening. Hello. There we go. Sorry, I'm going to have to have this. I've got a bit of jet lag, so uh, it's to stop me from falling asleep. What I'm going to do is I'm going to speak a bit and read a little bit of poetry to you. So, like Mike said, I joined the military in 2009, and I left in 2014. I joined Veterans for Peace when I was in, in 2013. So you can see I was involved in this for a year whilst uh, I was still in the military. And funnily enough, the army got rid of me pretty quickly. Um, when I started doing this, it started uh, spreading around my unit. And before we knew it, a lot of guys, uh, yeah, were, didn't really want to do their jobs. So uh, they got rid of them. Um, I'm going to kind of talk about my story and my service in Afghanistan and what led me to join in Veterans for Peace. So like I said, I joined in 2009. I joined as an engineer. So we weren't really expected to go into combat as such. We weren't really trained. The training I did was probably pretty close to Second World War training, is storming a bunker. And that was kind of the only infantry training I did. So when I went to Afghanistan in 2012, I was attached to an infantry regiment and we were out in a very small patrol base in Afghanistan. And uh, I pretty much went and spent most of my time patrolling out as an infantryman and fighting off the Taliban. Excuse me. Obviously, you can see um, I haven't been out of the military long, and uh, the memories are still very strong for me, so uh, I often find it hard to talk about. So I spent a lot of time in firefights and that really kind of changed the way I saw things. When you are in a position where you have to scrape what's left of your friends out the back of uh, armoured vehicles and what you're doing to the local population, you know, driving through their houses with armoured vehicles because you can't be bothered to take the roads, you know, blowing up their houses for no reason calling in airstrikes of people on motorbikes, you know. Um, and we all kind of fell into it at one point. I remember we all thought it was funny as hell when we blew someone up on a motorbike and uh, we had their hat and an evidence bag and we thought, we thought that was funny as hell, you know. Um, and then slowly my mind changed. Um, and it, it got to me. And that was near the end of my tour. And then when I came home, I still felt that way and we came home to everyone waving British flags and I wasn't in the mood for that, you know, I didn't want to be patriotic anymore, I'd seen the truth behind it, you know, that there's no glory, there's no, will you charge into some great battle like we did in previous wars, it's, it's watching your mate get his head blown off, you know, like I said, scraping people out of armoured vehicles, that's the reality of it. And I suffered a lot with post-traumatic stress disorder after, uh, or when I came back from Afghanistan. But what I'll do, I'll read this first poem, and I call this one Mission Accomplished. Um, our Prime Minister used this phrase when we pulled out of Afghanistan, Mission Accomplished. I think, uh, did George Bush use a similar phrase? Yeah, I think uh, he might have read his uh, autobiography a few too many times. Okay. The government shouted of how we tried, forgetting all the boys who died. 
They washed their hands and pulled us back, leaving the enemy to attack. Not one of us stopped to wonder why. We all believed the British lie. We came back home to a marching band, pretending we had saved that land. The land we left high and dry. Now their children slowly wait to die. So that was the poem I wrote, which kind of expressed how I felt with, you know, coming home to the marching band. We were calling ourselves that we had saved Afghanistan. <laughs> we destabilized it. We, we ruined the country. You know, we did horrendous, horrendous things to that country. And when I got into Veterans for Peace and I changed the mind, I changed my, the way I felt. So I went to Afghanistan, very pro-military, and I believed what Britain was doing was right. And then suddenly when I came home and I didn't feel that way, and I tried talking to a lot of friends and relatives about the way I felt. And I, I got shunned by a lot of people. I don't know if people, people don't, they don't want to believe these things happen, you know? And when you have to lie to someone's parents about the way they were killed, because the government won't tell them the way they were killed, you know? That they had their head blown off, or what's in their coffin is, is mincemeat of their son, you know? And you know this for a fact, but, and you have to look into someone's parents' eyes. <laughs> Unbelievable. And I lost a lot of friends, a lot of friends, about the way I felt. You know, I was called a traitor. I was, I was called loads of different, different things, which is terrible. And there seemed to be a lack of understanding with the British public of, about what ha actually happens when you go to a war. I remember someone... <laughs> asked me when I came home was, oh, uh, didn't you have fun? So I, I don't know what they think happens in war, but um, none of it was very fun. The next poem I'm going to read is a poem called Boys of War. This is kind of about the lack of understanding of us as soldiers. We went out thinking we were doing the right thing for Britain and the greater good, but <laughs> we wouldn't. And also people's parents, the public, not really understanding where their sons were going, their sons and daughters, where they were going and what they were actually doing. When I think back to the times I've cried over all those boys who vainly died, I saw it on their mother's face when sons were sent off to that place. They marched off proudly to the war Little did they know what for. Now they sit here, barely sane, driven mad by memories and a pain. Do we still not really know the hell of where our children go? I'm hoping everyone can understand what I'm saying, so I've got a bit of a, bit of a funny accent. <laughs> So, obviously I joined Veterans for Peace 2013. Um, I was in the depths of post-traumatic stress disorder at that point. I held a lot of guilt, not only for my friends who were killed, but also the, Af the Afghan people, which I feel we let down, you know, and what we, what we did to them. We were out there to bring, what was it, Peace and freedom, apparently, which didn't quite work that way. Um, so I, I still feel guilt now about it. And I hope with what I do now, I can kind of make up for the wrongs I did when I was in the military. And it kind of helps me, you know, I, I still have PTSD now. The memories are still there. The bad dreams are still there. They never go away. But it make, hopefully, it makes me feel a little bit better if I can try and give something back. And, you know, I had absolutely terrible time. I used to smash the house up, used to get the police called around, taken away from my family several times. Um, I was a danger to them, I was a danger to myself. And our government, 
they don't seem to really want to admit the mental health side of things. They don't want to see that side. Um, a lot of these military charities in the UK, if you've lost a leg or you've lost an arm, they want to focus on that because if you're still pro-military, you're fine with these charities. You still need to be pro-military. If you're no longer that, they shun you. You know, I used to walk around with my veterans for peace patch on, which used to upset a lot of people. I don't know why. But, um, so I found things very, very difficult. And this last poem I'm going to read is basically about the time I went to see a doctor um, in my local town. And he basically made out to me that there was no such thing as post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah. That it was a made-up thing and everyone in World War II and World War I got on with it and I was whinging and, you know, it, it was kind of like... <laughs> if it was up to him, he would have shot me, you know, for being a coward. That's the way I kind of stepped away from it. So I wrote this poem about him. So... Um, uh, Hopefully you'll read it one day and realise he's in poetry, but, um... Okay. Sorry, son, the doctor said. Society can't take what's in your head. Here, why don't you take this pill? Let's never talk of how you're ill. Men weren't like this years ago. They went to war and did not show. No, we cannot give you much. You're not worth the time or gentle touch. Now go back home, you gutless spawn. They should have shot you there at dawn. <laughs>